Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing good and today I am back with a video series on class 9 maths number systems. So we are going to cover the entire lesson on number systems in 5 videos. So watch all the videos to get a crystal clear conceptual explanation on number systems. Numbers. Do you think that they play a critical role in mathematics? Of course, we can't think of mathematics without numbers. Whenever we want to quantify an object, we need numbers. If I ask you, how many biscuits do you have? How would you reply? You may say, I have many biscuits. But the word many might mean you have two biscuits, you have 20 biscuits or you have 20,000 biscuits. So how do I know? So that is why in order to exactly define how many you need numbers and all these whether 2, 20, 20,000, 20 lakhs, they are all numbers. Now when we talk about number systems, we are going to talk about many different types of numbers. Let's start with the basic ones. Let's say I have 10 fingers, 2 ears, 2 eyes, 1 nose. So all these basic numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on, they are natural numbers. But they aren't enough. What about a situation where I want to say that I have no biscuits at all? So do we have a number to define none? Of course. And that number is 0. So the moment we include 0 along with the remaining natural numbers, we get whole numbers. Right. But again, whole numbers are also not enough and that is why we have the third type of number that is integers. And what are they? Let's see. Sometimes we come across situations where we need numbers which are even lesser than zero. Let's say we want to measure the temperature of an ice cube and the temperature is lesser than zero degree. And that is where we talk about the negative numbers. Just the way we have plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4 after 0, similarly we have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and so on below 0. So all these negative numbers and positive numbers along with the 0 form the integers. Then we have the fourth type of number which is rational numbers. What are they? Let's think of this situation. Suppose your mom tells you that, okay, we have pizza for dinner tonight. So how many pizza will you eat? One, two or three? So you will be thinking, how can I eat one entire pizza? Forget about eating two or three. So your mom would say, fine, then you eat zero pizza. But then you do not want to miss the pizza. You want to eat some, but then how much? So you may say that, okay, I want to eat half of the pizza or one fourth of the pizza. So what you mean is I want to eat one slice out of the four slices or one slice out of the two slices. So what is this one by two or one by four? They are ratios and these type of numbers form the rational numbers. Finally, the fifth one, fifth type, which is little more complicated and these numbers are not rational numbers. For example, root over 2, root over 3 or pi. These are all called irrational numbers. So in this video, our agenda would be to talk about all of these different types of numbers. In fact, right away, we are going to talk about these five types of numbers and see them in more detail on a number line. All these five types of numbers that we discussed so far, they are together termed as real numbers. So basically in this lesson, we are going to deal with real numbers. If you look at this picture, this very clearly tells you what includes what. Let's start with natural numbers. As I said, natural number starts from 1, 1, 2, 3, so on till infinity, right? Now, if we look at the number line, where are the natural numbers? So all the numbers starting from 1 till infinity. So these are all natural numbers and the natural numbers are denoted by a capital N. Cool. So that's natural number. Next one is a whole number. What is whole number? All the natural numbers 
plus 0. So the extra thing that is there in whole number is a 0. 0 and all the natural numbers. That's whole number. So if you look at this picture, you see that natural number is inside the whole number. That means all natural numbers are also whole numbers. But all whole numbers are not natural numbers. So if you look at the number line, so the whole numbers would start from 0. So all the numbers starting from 0 till infinity. So that's whole number. Third one is integers. So integers, all the natural numbers, all the whole numbers and also the negative numbers. So basically in integers, we have all the negative numbers like minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on, plus 0, plus all the positive numbers. So that's integer. So where are they on the number line? All these numbers that you see here, whether the negative number or the 0 or the positive numbers, they are all integers. The fourth one is rational numbers. Okay, meanwhile, I forgot to tell you how do we denote them. So whole numbers denoted by a capital W, integers denoted by a capital Z. Surprised? Why not I and why Z? Well, so this Z is derived from a German word called Zahlen, which means to count. So the numbers are all about counting, right? So from there it got this letter Z and therefore integers are denoted by Z. Let's move on to the next one that is rational numbers. And what are rational numbers? The ratios 1 by 2, 2 by 3, 3 by 4, they are all rational numbers, right? So all of these numbers, whether it is 2, 2 can be written as a rational number because rational number has to be in the form of p by q such that q is not equal to 0. So that's how we define a rational number. So any of these numbers that we have discussed so far can be written as a rational number. For example, if I talk about 3, so 3 can be written as 3 by 1 which is in the form of p by q, q not equal to 0. If I talk about minus 3, minus 3 can be written as a rational number minus 3 by 1. If I talk about 0, 0 can be written as rational number that is 0 by 1, right? So all of these numbers, natural number, whole number, integers, they are all rational numbers. And where do we find them on the number line? So rational numbers, so these integers that we see, they are all rational numbers. But in between the, any two of these integers, there exists many, many rational numbers. Moving on to the fifth type that, okay, how do we denote rational number by a capital Q? Why Q? So rational, the word rational is derived from ratio, right? And Q is derived from the word quotient, right? Because when we talk about ratio, we are basically trying to divide two numbers and that is where we get a quotient. So that's why Q. Irrational numbers, all those numbers which cannot be represented in the form of P by Q. And where do we see them on the number line? Because irrational numbers are numbers like root 2, root 3, root 5, pi. So we really do not see them directly on the number line. But yes, they do exist on the number line. And we will learn how do we... Um, point out an irrational number on the number line. So we will learn about that a little later. Please remember that there are infinite number of rational numbers between any two rational number. Surprising? Yes, but that's true. You just think in your mind about any two numbers. Let's say if you talk about say 1 and 2 you will have plenty of rational numbers between them. For example, 3 by 2 would lie, which is, which is actually 1 and a half, would lie somewhere between 1 and 2. And you have so many numbers like that lying between 1 and 2. Are you curious to know that how do we find out numbers lying between two rational numbers? Let's understand that. Let's try to find out five rational numbers between 1 and 2. Okay, so we have to find between these two numbers that is 1 and 2. So 1 can be written as 1 by 1, 2 can be written as 2 by 1. Correct? Now, how do we find out these numbers? Now, just now I told you that there exists infinite number of rational numbers between any two numbers. So with that logic, there exists infinite number of rational numbers between 1 and 2. So I will show you how. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let us multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 10. 
right? So overall value remains the same because if I multiply the denominator as well as the numerator by 10, so overall value is going to be the same. So what is this that we get? We get 10 by 10 and we get 20 by 10. Okay, so now let us suppose if I have to find out values between 10 by 10 and 20 by 10, what will be those values? They could be 11 by 10, 12 by 10, 13 by 10, 14 by 10, 15 by 10, so on, 19 by 10 and then 20 by 10. So all these numbers will lie between 10 by 10 and 20 by 10. So I can say that all these rational numbers exist between 1 and 2 because they exist between 10 by 10 which is 1 and 20 by 10 that which is 2. So basically all these numbers exist between 1 and 2. Now let us suppose I do the same thing but instead of 10 I multiply this by 100. So what do we get? 100 by 100 and this side we get 200 by 100. Correct. Now, if I ask you to write down numbers that come between 100 by 100 and 200 by 100. So, what will be those numbers? 101 by 100, 102 by 100, 103 by 100 and so on till 199 by 100. Correct. So, what I am trying to tell is the moment we convert these rational numbers into another equivalent rational number by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by a same number, we will be able to identify many, many, many rational numbers in between. That is why we say that between any two numbers, there exist infinite number of rational numbers. So, the question is just asking for five rational numbers, which is nothing. Any five of these rational numbers exist exist between 1 and 2. Find 5 rational numbers between 3 by 5 and 4 by 5. Do I need to do it or you will try it on your own? I think you will be able to try it on your own. I will just give a slight hint. So here you have 3 by 5 and 4 by 5. So in first option you can multiply both the numerator and denominator by 10. So it becomes 30 by 50. This becomes 40 by 50. Therefore the numbers in between are 31 by 50, 32 by 50. 33 by 50 so on till 39 by 50. You can also multiply it by 100 so it becomes 300 by 500 and this becomes 400 by 500 so overall it becomes 301 by 500, 302 by 500 so these are the numbers in between. Now you may ask why is it necessary to multiply by 10? It is not at all necessary if you want you can multiply the numerator and denominator by 9. That's also fine. But then in that case, you will actually that your calculations will become difficult. Here it's like you're multiplying by 10. So 10 into 3 is 30. 10 into 5 is 50. But the moment you multiply it by 9 or 17, what happens is your calculation becomes more difficult. So since we already know that in between these two numbers, there exist infinite numbers and we anyways just need to find any five numbers. So let's go by the easiest route. So in this fashion, I think you will be able to identify five rational numbers. So based on our understanding of the different types of numbers, let's try a few true or false. Every integer is a rational number. Now, if you understand this clearly and if you have this picture in your mind, this will help you to answer all of these kind of logical questions. Where are integers? The green one is integer. Every integer is a rational number. Yes, because you, you can see all integers are contained within the rational number. So this is true. Every rational number is an integer. Is that true? No, because rational numbers, all rational numbers are not integer. There are many rational numbers which are not integers. Correct. For example, you talk about any integer, minus 3, minus 5, minus 27, they are all rational numbers. But you talk about any rational number, for example, if I talk about, uh, say, minus 2 by 3, that is not an integer. So this is false. Every natural number is a whole number. That is true because you can see that all the natural number are contained within the whole number. So this is true. Every rational number is a whole number that is absolutely false because you can see that whole number is contained inside rational number. That means all whole numbers are rational numbers, but all rational numbers are not whole numbers. 
every real number is an irrational number that's not possible because all of these numbers are real numbers so a real number can either be an irrational number or a rational number right so this is false so every point on number line is root m where m is a natural number so is that correct okay so with that if even if i assume that this is correct that actually means that on the number line we will only have numbers like root 1 root 2 root 3 root 4 and so on right but is that true no because on the number line we also have the whole number the negative numbers in fact the integers we have the rational numbers we also have the irrational numbers so basically we have all the real numbers on the number line so it will be incorrect to say that we only have numbers which is in the form of root m where m is a natural number so this is absolutely false I hope you found this video useful. In the next video, we are going to talk about how do we represent these numbers on a number line. So stay tuned.